We're ready to go. Cool. So thank you everyone for being here. I am delighted to see this turn out and I'm really I'm really honored to be able to present this panel. Um, these are some of the experts who are thinking about this topic and you know, especially Citizen Lab has really led the way in the type of research that is looking at combining these sort of sociological and political aspects of human rights reporting with you know, measurements and research and you know, look, you know, understanding the technological components of how networks work and how the internet functions in our lives. So this is, this is really exciting for me. Um, I am Meredith Whitaker. I am a program manager at Google Research. And my focus is measurement and open data. So you know, that can be translated into trying to understand what's happening and trying to communicate it in a way that can be verified by others. So you're not taking my word for it, you're looking at what the facts are and you're able to contest my claims and make your own conclusions. Um, when we're talking about measuring internet rights and openness, you can think of that sort of in terms of the traditional human rights model. So reporting has always been a part of that, gathering evidence, get, gathering accounts of human rights abuses, gather, you know, photographing evidence, um, and as we you know, moved into a, a, a time in the world in which a lot of things began to happen online, in which a lot of you know, abuses may have been facilitated by things that happened with networks, things that happened online, you know, the question really became how do we know, how do we gather the evidence we need to figure out what really happened to make the case for these types of abuses. And in that context, you can think of measuring, you can think of measurements as really evidence gathering, as a way of looking at these networks, looking at the bits on the wire, and you know, deducing from that um, what was happening and what was the impact on real humans in real time in the case of you know, rights and openness. So this is, this is connecting internet research with you know, human rights reporting. And I have on the panel a number of people who are thinking about this from a number of different angles. So I want to I want to start with Tim Maurer, who's a policy analyst at the Open Technology Institute, and can kind of you know, make a clear connection between you know, this type of research, which may seem very arcane to people, and and the real policy implications. So Tim, thank you, Maurer, and uh, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Tim, and I'm here to represent the Open Technology part of this um, collaborative effort. And I work, I'm part of, just in terms of background information, the OCI is a um, nonpartisan public policy uh, think tank in Washington, D.C. in the United States. And I'm part of the policy team of the Open Technology Institute. So um, the reason why, I'm on, why I am on this panel is uh, because I can speak to the importance of open data and measuring um, the network for the policy work um, that is my day-to-day and I've noticed since I've been involved in this space that um, the need for careful data is critically important to inform the policy development. Um, as some of you who might be who have been in Washington might know, uh, there's a lot of policy debate that is not necessarily grounded in empirical research, but this is, I think, definitely an area where the more data you have, uh, the, uh, the better your policy um, recommendations. To make that more specific, to give you two specific examples from the work that and my colleagues have been engaged in the last year or two is um, first broadband policy. Um, so this kind of data that we're talking about on this panel can be used to verify whether consumers are actually getting what they pay for and to find out if the net, by measuring the network whether the service that they pay companies is actually uh, what they receive um, themselves. And that, is, that has direct implications for our policy work specifically when it comes to domestic policy I work specifically on export controls um, and looking into um, whether existing export control regulations might need to be updated during the digital age. Um, as you know, a lot of what we've seen coming out of um, the certain countries after the Arab Spring, uh, a lot of the research that this lab has been done has shed light on new technologies that are used for surveillance and censorship. And one of the things that efforts like um, the people that are represented on this can help with is to help identify where those technologies are being used to then inform the policy recommendations and uh, analysis of what kind of changes might be necessary. But once those changes have taken place, how
how do you actually have a continuous research effort ongoing that helps policymakers uh, to decide what kind of technology should they be looking at? Because um, you know, you can, the spectrum of technology is so wide, but that if you have regulations that are overly broad, you know, actually end up having a potentially negative effect in terms of what you're trying to achieve. So having that empirical data is very really important uh, to limit potential unanticipated and uh, negative consequences. And that is why um, the Open Technology Institute has supported um, the measurement lab and other efforts that are also represented in the panel. And the MLab is a platform that allows totally open source measurement. So it's open data, it's a global platform, and it's open source measurement methodology, which is why it also has why we are trying to put this out there as a tool and resource for other researchers uh, that might not even be directly linked to this collaborative platform, but that have access to the data and can come up with their own research proposals. And I think that's something where uh, Colin, uh, Colin's work is a prime example for the kind of effects that you can have by pursuing uh, data that is then openly available. There's uh, currently, <laughs> currently 800 terabytes of uh, uh, totally open data that's available. Some, regular, some regulators are already using it, researchers are using it, and it's increasingly a valuable resource also for uh, policy analysts like myself. What's really the magic here is that, as I just uh, briefly alluded to, that because the data is openly available, you have other people looking at it and connected to their own research, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, and I think that's really a great example for anyone in the room who might be interested in using similar data to reach out uh, to any of us Thank you so much. Um, I think that's a, that's a great introduction that really frames, you know, why is this important beyond simply publishing research papers, beyond doing research and